Hey, welcome everybody. This is a brief introduction to the Amazon Product Advertising API, where I will be using the official Node.js SDK for interaction. I'll guide you through the documentation, explain the API call limits, and show you how to perform operations such as get items and search items. Lastly, I'll showcase how I utilize the API in one of my projects. Hey, welcome everybody. To access the Amazon Advertising API 5.0, go to webservices.amazon.com slash PA API 5 slash documentation. Make sure that you read the overview and get familiar with it. And I'm gonna try to explain as much as I can in a very short amount of time. Now to get started with this video, you're gonna need to register for the product advertising API. You can click on the link here on the left side, register for product advertising API. And then from here, you can click on sign up as an Amazon associate. From here, if you scroll down a little bit, you can sign up from any of those countries available. And once you sign up for one, you can actually apply for more. And the process for applying is actually fairly simple. It's just the initial process that might take uh, the longest. So let's say you wanted to sign up from Australia, you would click on this link and then you follow the instructions from here. Basically click on sign up and follow the instructions. There will be a couple of documents that you will need to fill, but that's the way it is. Now, once you register for the Amazon associate account, you've been approved. You should be able to start earning up to 12% in associate commission from qualifying purchases and programs. If you have a good idea and if you can make it work and then market it, you can make a decent amount of money from this. Now I'm gonna close this and let's talk about the API calls. Now, if you scroll down a little bit on the documentation here, and if you go on the troubleshooting and then API rates, this is actually really important and you should spend uh, some time reading about it just so you understand how it works. But what I've done is I've actually asked ChatGPT to summarize the text for me and give you just the important points. So let me quickly go through this so you understand how it works because it is very important. The product advertising API 5.0 provisions API call rates based on transactions per second TPS and transactions per day TPD. Initially, upon creating credentials, users are allowed one request per second and cumulative daily maximum of 8,640 requests for the first 30 days. The usage limit is adjusted based on shipped item revenue with one TPD, one transaction per day, earned for every five cents or one transaction per second up to 10 TPS, earned for every $4,320 of ship item revenue generated via the API in the previous 30 days. Now, what this means is basically when you create your credentials, you're going to get 8,640 requests for the first 30 days, which will allow you to develop your application. Now, after that, unfortunately, your API calls will be based on the revenue that you've generated. If you haven't generated any revenue, unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to make too many API request calls, which is a little bit of a shame because obviously when you're starting out, you want to be able to make requests. So you get the data and you can make some revenue, but it's the way it works. So you're just going to have to be clever in the way you program your application. If an account hasn't generated referring sales for 30 consecutive days, access to the API is lost. Access is restored within two days after referred sales are shipped. Sales attributed to the API can be checked in the link type performance report on Associates Central. That's when you log into your account. And best practices include using provided links without editing your parameters, creating both Associates and API accounts with the same Amazon account, using the primary account for API requests and passing parameter tag in all requests. But I'm gonna tell you about this in a second. And throttling occurs if requests exceed usage limits or if access is revoked, resulting in 429 too many requests error message. Let me explain what this means. If I go back to one of the products here that I've selected, for example, this keyboard, and I've already logged into my Amazon account, which has access to the Amazon Associates. As you can see, you should be able to get this gray bar at the top where you can see your earnings and you can click on the side stripe. Now, from here, what you can do is actually you can generate affiliate links by clicking. So you need to go to a product first of all, and then click on get link. And this is going to generate a link with your associates ID. This is useful because this is not going to cost you any API calls and you can actually start by using this first of all uh, and maybe put links in your products manually, which is obviously a manual job, but uh, maybe you do it manually to start with. 
with the affiliate links and then you can use the API with the same associate ID. So if you earn money from this affiliate link, then it's going to fill your API if that makes sense. Now to get started, you need to log into your Amazon account. For example, I'm using amazon.co.uk for the UK. And then here you can click on site stripe, click on that. And here is my site stripe in here. And in order to create the API key, you need to go under tools and then product advertising API from here, scroll down a little bit. And this is where you can manage your credentials. But essentially from here, you need to click add credentials and create a new API key. This is going to give you your access key and a secret key. Make sure that you save them somewhere. So I'm going to download mine and put them in my downloads folder and we should be good to go. So I'm going to close this, go back to the product advertising documentation. And now if you go up here, you will see that we have API references and operations. If you click on operations super quickly from here, you'll be able to see what you can actually do with the API. So you can actually search for items by keywords. You can actually get variation of an items. For example, if you search for, uh, let's say you're looking for Harry Potter. And if you want to get variation of Harry Potter products, uh, that could be books, that could be pens, that could be uh, posters, whatever. You can get variations from here and the get items is basically when you want to get specific items. So if you wish to get, for example, details from this keyboard, maybe the title, the image, the price, it doesn't have an offer this one, but uh, so you can get a lot of the, so you can get most of the details from this listing by using this get items operation. And to be completely honest, I've never used the get browser notes one. And today I'll probably show you the get items and the search items, but they're very similar and easy to use. Now we'll look at these in a second, but before we do that, let's go to quick start here and click on using SDK because that, this is what we're going to be doing today. In this page, you will see that you can use PHP, Java, Node.js and Python. And today I'm going to be using Node.js and let's download the SDK from here. So I'm going to click on it. This is going to download it in my downloads folder. Here it is. And I'm actually going to extract this on my desktop super quickly. So bear with me one second. I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call it Amazon dash APA API dash five, maybe and press enter. So I'm actually going to extract the contents of this inside this folder like so. Okay, and um, we should be good to go. Now inside this project folder, this is going to be your project folder. You should be able to have the sample get items, the sample get variation, the sample search items and so on. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to install the node modules, just like the documentation suggests. So npm install. Let's do that. So inside this folder, I'm going to do left shift, right click, open in terminal. And this is basically a shortcut to this folder. Alternatively, you can CD by doing CD command CD and then the folder name to navigate to where you need to be. Once you're in this folder, you can do NPM I for install and press enter. This will install the Node.js modules in here and we can actually begin by working on our project. So I'm going to, I'm going to open the code in Visual Studio Code, so code dot, and here is Visual Studio Code open for me. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we can get started. Now let's start with the sample get items API. I'm going to click on this and it might look uh, quite busy in here, but this is because they have quite a lot of useful comments. I'm going to remove the top ones just because it's too much. And then we'll focus maybe let's remove a few more just so we can have a clear document. Okay. That should do the job. Maybe we do that. Maybe we do that and like that. Okay. That should do, do the job. This is a lot cleaner now and I'm going to explain everything as we go along. The first thing that we need from here is the access key, which we already have. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder here and open the CSV file and let's grab the access key from here. Paste it inside here and let's grab the secret key, copy and paste. And now for the host, you can actually find this information 
on the documentation, which I'm going to show you right now, actually, and the region. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab region and let's go back to the documentation and search for it. So if you search for region, uh, common request parameters, I believe it was here, click on this. And then if you search for region, this should give you another link here. So I'm going to click on it. Oh, here it is host and regions. So if you wish to find specific hosts and regions, for example, you might want to get products from Australia and you want to use their currency, then you will change the host to this one here. And the region is also here. So you change that. And as you can see, the difference is here. So you can use any of these. I'm going to leave mine as default to whatever it is at the moment. So US East one and the web services dot Amazon dot com. That should work fine for me. And then for the partner tag, in order to find your partner tag, you can go back to the Amazon, to your dashboard. So I'm going to have to go back to Amazon and click on Amazon Associate here. And you can find your partner tag here at the top right corner. So for me, this is going to be Ruddy one link 20 And the reason it says one link is because when you log into your Associate, you can actually create one link for all countries if you apply for more countries. And basically your earnings will be consolidated. And yeah, you have one link for all countries which can be great. So I'm going to go back and paste my partner tag inside here. And for the partner type, this is going to be associates as the default. You don't need to change this. And now here is the uh, fun part. All right, for the item request item IDs, essentially they have a couple of demo products here, which I'm not going to use. I'm going to add my own one for this specific example where you want to get a specific item from the API. You need to provide an ASIN number. ASIN number stands for Amazon standard identification number. And in order to get one, essentially you need to go to Amazon, find a product. For some reason, not all of them have one, but most do. And if you search, for example, on this product, let's say if you search for ASIN, and this is the ASIN number that you need to copy and paste inside here in order to get specific information for this product and of course you can list more here by doing comma and then just listing them like so just like in the original example now for the condition let's say if we grab this and if you go back to the api here let me scroll to the top and here is if you search under get items request parameters if you search for condition from here you will see that this is a type of string the default value is any and the usage here so now if i was to click on condition parameters this will lead me to this section where they have all the parameters listed that you can use so you can either use any new use collectible or refurbished as of now we're just using new as you can see inside here and i'm going to leave it as default the same goes for the item uh, resources here. So essentially you can get different, uh, you can request different resources such as the uh, different uh, image size, title, listing offerings, offer listing price and so on. Just to show you an example, I'm going to copy image and let's search for one. So under the resource parameters, if you look here, basically you can read about each parameter inside here. But essentially, a, uh, an easy example is if you want to get a large image for this item, you can grab this and paste it inside here. So you'll do, let me just make some space like so, and then maybe we'll put it under the medium image like so. So we're getting a medium image and a large image link. And just like that, you can do a lot more. There is a lot more stuff inside here, as you can see but uh, I won't be able to obviously cover everything. So that, that's how it works. And let's have a look at what else do we have. So I'm going to save this. And then if you scroll down even further, now let's go to the bottom first of all, and you understand how it works. Essentially, we're getting two functions here. One is on success, we're going to display some data. And then on error, we're going to display what the error is. Now the error is actually here. It's just going to console lock what the error is, which is great. And for the success, it's basically here and you don't need all of this but they've given you a very good example here on how you can use it so on api success you're going to get the console or api code successfully and then you're going to get the object from the amazon api and then just console log in here now you technically don't need all of this in here but essentially they're just looping and i think they've made a little function here that so this function passes get item response into an object with a key as async and if you look inside this loop in here, 
Essentially, all they do is they look through the object and they grab individual items so they can be displayed. Uh, console logged in this case. So console log the async number, console log the detail page URL. Um, inside here, you have console log the title, you have console log the buying price and so on. Now let's test this. Make sure that you save it. Let's go back to the PowerShell. I'm going to clear everything and let's do node and then sample get items api.js and this should run the file press enter and as you can see first of all it starts with api code successfully which is the literally the code here and then we'll literally stringify the whole object and displaying it so we have item results items we have the async number the direct url to the actual product with my affiliate link in here as you can see which is great we have the images so for the images we have a medium image here which you can click and view and we have a large one which you can click and view i'm going to click on this one let's have a look at it and here is the little power bank image that comes from the amazon now if we look uh, further you're going to get the title of the item and you're going to get the current offers so for the current offers, you're getting the price, amount, currency, display amount, savings, currency, uh, USD, display amount with the percentage and then the percentage individually, which can be quite useful. But one thing that I want to stress about is that obviously not every single item is an offer. So from time to time, you might not get this, just so you know, if you try with an item that is not an offer. So try a couple items and you'll see that it will pop up eventually. And the last thing here is basically that they're just console logging the ASIN, the detail page URL, the title and the buying price, uh, which is the code pretty much here. So that's pretty much it. You, you can obviously remove this and it will be much less code. And note that I am zoomed in quite a bit as well. So this is the first example that uh, I can show you. And the second example that I can show you super quickly would be the search. So it will be exactly the same. In fact, let's open this in a new tab here and let's uh, change the access key first of all. So I'm going to grab my access key. I'm going to grab the secret key. Let's grab the, what else do I need? Uh, the partner tag ID for me. I'm going to grab that. Save it inside here. And then this is a little bit different. This is obviously searching for items. And for example, they have a keyword of Harry Potter. So you can search for Harry Potter. And then from here, you can see the different indexes in the documentation. But essentially here, we want to find Harry Potter books. And we want to find only two books. Of course, you can change the number to more items and so on. But let's see how this works. And the resources is exactly the same. You can add more resources in here if you wish the image to be large, if you want to get the, light, the listing price and so on. And essentially they're doing exactly the same thing in here. They're just giving you different examples and that's it. So let's see whether we can search for Harry Potter. So in PowerShell one more time, I'm going to clear this and I'm going to do node and then sample. And then this is going to be search items api.js and press enter this is going to go to the amazon api and search for items with the harry potter keyword and from here as you can see we're getting a search url we're getting two items which the first one is shall we click on it let's click on it okay yeah it's a harry potter book as you can see um and then you have the title, you have the offerings for this book, as you can see. And then you have, you should have another, and then you have another book inside here. So this is the second item. And if I click on this image here, you will see that these are two boxes, I believe. Let's have a look. So these are the actual Harry Potter paperback book, book set. So books from one to seven, and it gives you the current offer, which is great. And then it just lists them in here which is awesome. So this is pretty much how you can use the API. All right, just as an example, I'm going to show you what I did for one of my projects. And essentially the project was about camera gear. In this case, we have a camera lens. Essentially every single camera lens in my database 
had an affiliate ASIN number uh, that I've grabbed from Amazon. And, and basically I was able to make Amazon API calls by using this ASIN number and sync the price. So every morning my Node.js application will trigger around 10 o'clock. It's gonna query all lenses where they have an Amazon ASIN UK number. And then it's gonna go to the Amazon API and bring the latest data such as the pricing and the offers. And essentially I was able to sync my database like that every single morning. And uh, this is an example, for example, Amazon data object. This is uh, out of date one because it's local, but essentially I was just updating this here. So I would create an Amazon data object and this is going to be a UK one where I put the updated at when it was updated around 10 in the morning. For some reason it says nine, maybe it's uh, server thing and then i was updating the amount the currency the display amount i was getting the amazon url as you can see then i had the savings for some of the lenses for example this one has the savings amount of 8.58 the display amount and the percentage and so on and then i also use exactly the same strategy to make a price history kind of like graph from my website so when you visit a specific product i uh, see the price history how it's changed every single day month and year so that's it